Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the reason why Gen Z is not joining the military. Now, the military is facing the worst recruitment crisis in its entire history. So, let's watch this video on why no one is joining. Army is pumping out TikTok style get ready with me videos like this. I'm going to show you my daily hair and makeup routine as well as discuss some of the updated Army grooming standards. But it's hardly working. I mean, only 800 people saw that video on Go Army's YouTube channel. The U.S. Army had its most difficult recruiting year since it ended the draft in 1973. The U.S. military is even going to esports and mom influencers, trying to convince you to join. Influencers are not telling them to go into the military. Moms, dads, uncles, coaches, pastors do not see it as a good choice. But what does all of this mean for the world's most powerful country? The military fell short short of its recruitment goals by over 60,000 recruits in 2020. 60,000. That's like, I think that's over a freaking battalion's worth, probably multiple battalions. And America is supposed to be able to fight a two front war at all times. And if you're short 60,000 troops, it will be very difficult to actually replace your numbers, replace your casualties, have the infrastructure to actually maintain a viable war machine, especially during times of extreme conflict. Now, the ironic thing is we're actually agitating um, regions like the Middle East trying to um, promote a war with with iran syria um israel lebanon we're trying to get these countries to hate each other so the military industrial complex can have an excuse to start another war okay we've been at a constant state of war throughout our entire history there has never been a moment in America, American history where we haven't been at war. We have never known peace ever. We are an empire. And you know what empires do? They take more and more and more and more and more land and, and, and until the empire collapses. It never just stops taking land. It just never stops um, starting more wars, taking more territory. That's literally what empires do. And Americans, they are now starting to realize that, hey, maybe we're not fighting for our freedom. We're actually just making a handful of people rich in the military industrial complex. We're making a handful of people who are getting backroom deals. We're making them rich. We're not making ourselves rich. We're not making ourselves any safer. If anything, we're making us less safe by creating division across the world by making other countries hate us that is why people are saying no i'm not joining the military 22. this is the first time the military missed its recruitment goals in more than a decade leaving the army navy and air force roughly 30,000 recruits short of their goals and just look at these numbers the number of people who have joined the military each year has declined by more than 20 percent since 2010. 20 percent that is a massive, massive number. In any other country, this would mean you have to instill some sort of draft or you have to redesign the military. But the military is really just acting like nothing's happening. They're just recruiting less viable candidates. They're, they're trying to recruit anybody. Um, they're making the pay for, for military. They're doubling then tripling the pay for military positions but what americans really want is we want a country to fight for we want something that we'd be willing to put our lives on the line for okay just throwing out a huge number um saying oh you get this 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 is and, and that's not going to convince us we need because either way you can't replace your life with money if you get killed in the line of duty that's it. It doesn't matter what sort of benefits you have on the table. That's it. You're done. So 
the best recruitment tactic would be to make our country um worth living in not just have us be wage slaves not just have us living paycheck to paycheck not just have us not being able to afford a freaking house how about that how about put the the the, the younger generation first how about how about listen to us listen to our needs first because right now the the american citizen citizenry is being treated like we don't even exist who cares? Who cares what they want? Who cares if everything we told them from birth was a lie? Who cares if 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 their standard of living is dropping generation after generation? You better join the military, though. You better join the military. It doesn't matter if, if literally in the next few generations, America won't even exist, probably, because we're just so incompetent with the way it is being run okay within the next few years i mean we're already suffering hyperinflation who's going to put their life on the line for a weimar republic style government not me the average age of a new recruit is 20 years old. It used to be 18 just a few years ago. And the military is having a harder time recruiting people from certain demographics, like women and minorities. But why are people not wanting to join the military anymore? Well, here are four reasons. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have taken a toll on the military's reputation. See, many people are hesitant to join an institution that has been involved in so much conflict and made people wonder, what was the point of that? Second, there didn't used to be so many options for young people. Today, you can be a software engineer in your basement, a YouTuber, a graphic designer. But a few decades ago, you were limited to the jobs that were available in your physical community. Third, the job market is very strong right now in the US. The unemployment rate is low. There are many good I do not think this is a reason. I, the the job, job market, yes, there's more options. But again, most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Most Americans aren't making as much as their parents adjusted for inflation. The standard of living is going down. I think it's more having to do with the military's reputation being absolutely destroyed during the war on terror, Iraq, Afghanistan, and what we're doing in the Middle East currently by destabilizing countries like Syria, Iraq, um, we are agitating Israel in, in, in the Gaza war. We have destroyed countries like Libya, where we just utterly took out a, a so-called dictator and just freaking drone striked it. Could you imagine if another country drone striked an American leader? Could you imagine? It would mean war. But these countries just get freaking drone striked by the United States and, 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 and if they fight back, they're called terrorists. So, so this is just an immoral army. This is not about freedom. This is about fulfilling the needs of the military industrial complex. That is why people aren't joining the army in droves. And from what I can see, most homeless people are military veterans. Um, and almost every homeless person I see is a military vet. So that just goes to show you how much of a toll it will take on your mind just being constantly told what to do 24 hours a day, being owned like property by the government. And you know, who wants to go through that? Yes. And and, and the reasons and, and a lot of these shills that say, oh, the, 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 the military is good for you. No, no. And, and the reasons they always give give is, oh, you'll may, meet some interesting people. And then that's it. That's their only reason for joining the military. Oh, you get good benefits. No, because everybody I talk to says you have to fight and call for tooth and nail to get those benefits. They don't just hand them to you. There'll be a bunch of bureaucracy in the middle of you and those benefits. Okay, you, they don't just give it to you. They're hoping and praying that you don't get it. Otherwise, the military would collapse because they're just paying too much money.
paying jobs available in the civilian sector. And that means the idea of joining the military is less appealing. I mean, so many people right now want to work from home instead of an office. So how many people will actually want to work long hours in physical conditions and maybe even be deployed out of the country for a cause they may or may not believe in? And number four, the military is no longer seen as a guaranteed ticket to a job and a stable future like it might have been seen just a few decades ago. And many people are now more aware aware of the dangers and challenges of military service. But hold on, the biggest culprit of all of this may actually ironically be veterans. See, 80% of all new recruits have a family member who have served in the military. But now many veterans are telling their kids or grandkids not to join anymore. I did because my father had served in the Second World War in the Army in New Guinea and the Philippines, and I thought it was my obligation to serve. Some veterans are saying, and I quote, I saw too many of my friends die in Iraq and Afghanistan. I don't want my kids to go through that. The military is not what it used to be. It's become more politicized, and I don't want my kids to be involved in any potential conflicts. There are other ways to serve your country without joining the military. You can volunteer your time to help others. You can donate to charity or you can get involved in politics. Your biggest source of recruits used to come join you proudly because their family served, and now many of those same people don't even want to join any. So the military is generational. Most um, people who volunteer for the military, their father was in the military, their grandfather was in the military. And now that the military has ruined its reputation, they've ended a lineage of military um, service. So of course they're gonna go through a recruitment shop, recruitment crisis, okay? They, 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 they can't get away with these wars that always end up in disaster and expect to keep maintaining their recruitment levels. Um, have we lost, and it feels like we haven't won a war in a long freaking time. Um, since Vietnam, it's just either been proxy wars or in every single direct war, direct conflict ends up in failure. And it lasts. And these conflicts last way too long. Why don't we just go in, defeat the enemy and get out? Why do we have to stay in a country for like 20 years spending all this trillions of dollars for no reason? Meanwhile, we have the veterans living on the streets, being poor, being mentally ill, and, and we are ignoring them. But for some reason, we have to rebuild these foreign countries um, on the other side of the world. More. You can see how this is turning into a massive problem. See, the military is the backbone of the U.S. national security. It needs a strong pool of recruits to maintain its readiness. If the military can't recruit enough people, it might not be able to meet its missions. So in order to deal with this problem, the U.S. military is kind of lowering its bar. The military is now relying on older recruits and recruits with lower test scores. It's also offering higher bonuses and incentives to attract more recruits. And even which means more of your tax money being stolen from you in order to have enough troops to fight in these forever wars. These imperialistic um, nothing burger wars that always end up in a national embarrassment to the people of America. But hey, they don't care because the military industrial complex makes billions regardless if we win or lose the war. So who cares, right? Who cares that, that they're just casually taking more money out of your paycheck to incentivize these soldiers that don't fight for freedom that don't defend the country instead they are being sent to these military bases on the other side of the world and and it's just trillions and how much is this like trillions and trillions who who's counting right who's counting who cares if if we actually i mean we are beyond the level of the, the 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 number of troops needed to defend our country it's just that we need all these bases filled we have to be an imperialistic nation if we actually put our attention on defense only we would have way more than enough troops to actually defend this country and maintain a uh, national security even reducing its training standards the government is taking drastic steps to address its recruiting problem 
The Pentagon is now increasing its advertising budget and it's offering up to $50,000 just in bonuses if you join. The government is also working hard to improve its image to appeal to more women and minorities. But it remains to be seen if those efforts will be effective. See, the recruiting problem is a massive one and there's no easy solution here. But hold up, does all of this really matter since now things are shifting? I mean, technology is becoming such a big part of warfare. Do we really need so many humans on the ground? I mean, one day, won't we just deploy humanoid robots? Well, yes, technology is playing an increasingly important role in war. You have drones and robots and other high-tech weapons that are more and more common, which are reducing the need for human soldiers. But humans are still essential to warfare. See, humans are needed to make decisions, to operate the technology, and to provide support to the troop. There are still types of warfare that require human soldiers, like counterinsurgency operations. So yes, it's true. Technology Technology is playing a more important role in warfare, but humans are still essential to the military. And the US military needs a strong pool of recruits to maintain its readiness. But this is not just an American problem. Other countries are having a hard time to get enough young people to want to join their militaries. So what are other countries doing? Israel has compulsory military service for all men and women between the ages of 18 to 21. This ensures that the military has enough number of recruits even though there is not a lot of interest in military service among young Israelis. So Israel has way too many troops for what it actually needs. And a lot of these troops, I mean, calling it military service, isn't it really accurate? Because the soldiers in Israel operate as policemen. They, 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 they bully Palestinians. They shoot Palestinians. They're untrained. They're not trained well enough to know hey this is a civilian maybe i shouldn't shoot him and 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 they just kill civilians they commit atrocities every single day the israeli army the idf and the soldiers are just hateful hate hateful soldiers um so no wonder a country like israel would want compulsory military service because the military service is there to brainwash the Israelis into hating Palestinians, shooting Palestinians. Israelis. Then there's South Korea. South Korea has a volunteer military, but the government offers financial incentives to people who join. And these incentives are pretty good. They include free college tuition and a guaranteed job after military service. And then there's Sweden. Sweden has a volunteer military as well, but the government has been struggling to recruit enough people. So as a response, the government is making it easier than ever to join the military while also increasing the pay and benefits for military personnel. Both President Biden and former President Trump have expressed concern about the US military's recruiting troubles. Biden is saying that the military needs to do a better job of recruiting young people, and he has pledged to increase the military's advertising budget. Trump has also said that the military needs to do a better job of recruiting, and he has proposed a number of changes to the military's recruiting policies. But what happens if the US can't fix this? Well, for one, the military could be less effective. The military will have to rely more on technology to compensate for the lack of humans, but this could lead to problems since technology can be unreliable and vulnerable to attacks. Another thing that can happen is the military will just be more expensive. See, the military will have to spend more money on technology to compensate for the lack of human soldiers. This could lead to budget problems since the military already spends a significant amount of money on technology. And finally, the military will become less diverse. See, already it's faced with the challenges of not being able to recruit enough women and minorities. And if there are fewer humans in the military, it will become even more difficult to recruit these groups, which could ultimately have have a negative impact on the military's effectiveness because it would be less representative of the population that it's supposed to defend. But I want to know, what do you think? What should the U.S. military be doing to recruit young people? We could just hire mercenaries. Why don't we just hire mercenaries? I mean, if all of our bases are overseas, why don't we just hire people from the foreign countries our bases are from? Okay, nobody wants, to, nobody here in America wants to get shipped a thousand miles away and 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 live their life in a freaking base on the other side of the world okay so just hire a bunch of mercenaries from these countries that our bases are from and you of course you have to vet them to make sure they're actually loyal 
but it would make way more sense than spending millions of dollars just to recruit one freaking soldier here in America. And you get them at a discount if you hire them from overseas because they don't have to pay them as much. You can pay them like $1 a day. They don't want benefits. They just want something, a job. Okay, here Americans, we're in the quote unquote land of opportunity. So you have to pay us a lot. People from joining instead of wanting to be YouTubers. And do you see this as a problem? What does the future of the world's most powerful military look like? Let me know your comments below. While you're at it, check out more of my videos like this and don't forget to subscribe. America is not the world's most powerful military. So the real strength in a military is its leadership. You can have all the fancy equipment, all the fancy technology you want. But if your generals aren't properly commanding and training your army, then it's it's over. You will never win a war. Um, like we've seen if at, in Afghanistan, how they just left trillions of dollars worth of equipment in enemy territory, how they failed to train. Yes, failed to train the Afghanistan army that was supposed to defend Afghanistan after we left we we left them all this equipment and then they just threw that threw down their arms they just said oh okay that means we didn't do our job training them that means we didn't do our job pacifying the native population and the same exact thing happened in Vietnam we're like oh we're gonna go in we're gonna pacify the prop population we're gonna train the, the, the South Vietnam army what could go wrong and then we just lost a long brutal failure that unfortunately took the lives of 60,000 Americans for what for nothing um, so who wants to repeat that process? You can pay all the money in the world, but you will never get your mind back. You might never get your, your limbs back. You, you will never get your innocence back. You, you won't because that is what the military does. It turns you into a killer. It takes from you. And a lot of people are starting to see this. So let's watch another video so this is vietnam veterans wild ptsd moment so let's watch it and chamber it around hey, look. i hung out with this guy that came back from vietnam and one day he pulled out a rifle and chambered around and he looked at me he says i could do this right now like at you yeah he turned on me he turned on me so was he having like a he ptsd was having, hallucination he would, listen i don't know why i didn't tell anybody but this guy had a high powered rifle and he had a scope on it and he just looked through the scope and i was not old enough to realize oh i know this was wrong but i didn't say nothing and then one day he turned the rifle on me and he said i could do this right now i hung out with this so this is PTSD at its finest. So you think you can turn into a killer for only like four years and, and after your military service, you can just turn it off? No. Once you're a killer, you're always a killer. Okay. You have to tr be, try really, really hard in order to turn that part of you that was unlocked during warfare off. You have to. So... And they act like you could just work some cushy job afterwards. Oh, you get these benefits after you live. Then it's happily ever after. And, and, and it's a lie. It's a lie. Most, a lot of people who see hardcore combat are never able to live a normal life ever again. And that's the sad reality. Um, and, and even most modern day veterans will tell you this. Most modern day te veterans will tell you, I don't want my kids joining the army because I've seen people die. I've had to do things that I would never want my kids to do. And, 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 and the, the, the secrets have been exposed with social media. People are just not wanting their kids to join the army, not wanting the next generation to experience what they have experienced in these forever wars. So this is a TikTok or by a military, I don't know, she's a Marine, an army soldier, but let's watch this. And get weirder. 
I just wash my hands. That's why they're wet. No other reason. And get weirder. So this is the most childish thing you'd ever see, expect to see from a freaking so-called soldier just filming a TikTok in uniform. And I'm almost 90% sure the military is paying attractive women to make TikToks in order to get simps to join the military. I'm almost 90% sure because no way would an army that wants to be taken seriously of be allowing content like this to be re released into the public because it just makes the military look like a joke. You know, China is watching these videos. You know, Iran is watching these videos. You know, Russia is watching these videos. Do you think these countries will fear us after watching videos like these? Obviously not. Obviously not. It makes us look like a joke. So, 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 so this is just ridiculous. Once you join the military, you're supposed to conduct yourself like a soldier. And when you're not conducting yourself like a soldier, you, you don't film it. You don't put it on social media. It just, it just makes everyone cringe. Everyone who expect, like imagine a freaking World War II veteran watching this saying his military turn into a joke people want to join the military the people who want to join the military want to join it because they want to to contribute to the somewhat honorable um history of the u.s army so yeah we fought in these wars but at least these these useless wars that we lost but at least i'll be held to a high standard and i'll be able to say i was a u.s army veteran there was a high amount of honor in the past just just from going through the combat and making out on the other side but now due to tiktoks like this it's just seen as a joke it's seen as a meme it's seen as a utter failure how they've lowered the standards so much that this behavior is allowed it's cringe so let's watch let's read some of the comments so it says soldier makes a 30 second video out of boredom youtube commentators we're all gonna die our army is useless why are women in the military the man on the couch eating chips said so why did we lose the war because clout was more important than winning so this guy's clearly saying that you know this type of reverse propaganda is making us be seen as weak i mean what sort of enemy would fear this nobody's gonna fear this the enemy and they're they're looking at her like she's the spoils of war they're not looking at her like an actual combatant they're like oh oh spoils of war oh i better fight even harder what do you think is going to happen after an, an our positions are surrounded? The military's positions are surrounded and they're besieging the spoils of war. So this is not threatening to the enemy at all whatsoever. Yeah, you think, oh, let's just make the, the military seem fun. That's not good. So. Um, What's up, guys? And get weird. We are so unbelievably screwed if there is a war. Yes, we are. This this is not the behavior of a soldier. I just wash my hands. That's why they're wet. Look, she purposefully stood like that. She knows exactly what she is doing. She knows exactly what she's doing. This is this is shameful. This is utterly shameful. Now, if you are a female and you're joining the army, at least act like a soldier. At least act dignified when you're on camera. But all these female thirst trap TikTokers have single-handedly, single-handedly ruined the military's reputation. And you wonder why no one takes the military seriously anymore. Exactly. 
exactly we have an american flag profile pic so he's like what is, what is happening to my military i'm over here waving the flag being patriotic in this i mean our military is probably making up 90 percent of the reason why there's patriotism in this country once you once you take that away people have nothing left people have absolutely nothing left there's nothing more american than seeing an f-16 fly by you with the american the the, the the american music playing that there's nothing more patriotic than that than the military once you shame you you demoralize the military it's over you can't have america without its military that's why we've been always been in a state of war constantly since our country's founding since before our country's founding looks like someone didn't take their cyber awareness training obviously because she's just giving away her position she's just telling the enemy what the inside of their their living quarters looks like bro she got banked though no lies look at the simp the simp imagine if enemy soldier capture these kind of soldiers what they can use to get informations that's terrible grammar yeah, yeah, do you think she's going to be resist an interrogation if the enemy captures captures her and interrogates her and, and tortures her? Do you think she's going to be able to resist? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm not saying this because she's a woman. No, I'm saying it because of her behavior, her clownish, unserious, immoral behavior that is, this thirst trap culture has infiltrated the military and it has destroyed all honor destroyed all honor left within our arms forces the army should create a squad of soldiers who happens to be what is up with this terrible grammar my god the army should create a squad of soldiers who happens to be using their uniform for clout. I mean, why even have her, if she's going to be doing this, why even have her dress in clothes, right? Just have her dress in a bikini. Just have her, just have her wear a thong everywhere. If she's just going to be doing this, what, what is even the point of having a uniform? At the end, she just wanted to show her backside, obviously. Obviously, that goes with that. And this guy says, bro, go do your job. Yes, doesn't she have a job to do? Isn't she supposed to be defending our country? Isn't she supposed to be defending our country? What is she doing on TikTok? And it's owned by the Chinese government. It's literally Chinese spyware. And here she is on freaking TikTok. Just giving away all information, all of her texts, all of her everything. And, and they're just allowed to be on TikTok. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You can't distract missiles. No idea what that means. Bro, what is the point of this video other than to do a thirst trap? Obviously. Obviously. So she responded to this comment. That's the point. What you mean? So she knows she's thirst trapping thirst trap in the military i never would have thought i'd seen see the day where thirst trapping is allowed in the military so next up you're gonna see army women in thongs promoting to the enemy that hey i'm the spoils of war i'm not an actual soldier remember i'm not an actual soldier i'm the spoils of, of war i'm not the actual fighting force because that's what she's giving off. She's not giving off any sort of threat, threatening vibes. You're supposed to make the enemy scared, not freaking horny. Russians, we bring back the Soviet Union. And if and if you look at old pictures of the Soviet, the woman who fought in the Soviet Union, they look angry. They look scary. They look like they're ready for anything. When you look at our female soldiers, they look pathetic in comparison Comp pathetic <laughs> good luck to our military full of tiktokers now yes that's exactly what the military is now tiktok tiktok um like these comments though bro 
Useless people like in the military just gives me no hope for the future. I pray to God we don't face no war. Yes, we are screwed if we face an army. And remember what I said at the beginning of the video. I said America is not the most powerful army in the world because if our leadership and our soldiers are terrible, then no, no matter how much tech we have, we'd be screwed anybody anyway because any army can just easily outthink us, just like the Taliban out outthinked us in the Afghanistan war. They were literally a bunch of freaking herd sheep herders <laughs> living in, in caves with zero technology, and they still killed us, okay? And, and, and they, they outfought us. So we need to, what we really should do is stop focusing on recruitment, stop lowering the standards, and we should reshape the, the military in general. We should see what worked, what didn't work in the Afghanistan war, and reformat our tactics because we've been using the same exact tactics since the freaking Vietnam War. Matter of fact, probably even before then, probably since like World War II. So all of this is just it's it's a recipe for disaster. If we ever get in a war, we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose. If we ever get in a war with a major power like Iran, Russia, China, we are going to lose. If China and, and China sees these TikToks, they know that we are a joke at this point. So let's watch a, another video. And this says, what's causing America's military volunteer shortage? Half hour with America's all volunteer military. It served the nation for more than five decades, but now recruiting is a growing problem. Not because of a lack of interest, but because too many potential recruits fall short of current military standards. Though some say it's those standards that actually need to change. Correspondent David Martin has the story. Not everybody gets to meet the boss their first day on the job. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. But these brand new members of the armed forces got to meet Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin as he marked a major milestone. But 50 years ago this week, the United States stopped drafting citizens into service and turned instead to an all-volunteer force. It was created at the end of the Vietnam War to replace the widely unpopular draft. But former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper says the all-volunteer force is showing its age. The all-volunteer force is on a long, slow decline due to a number of demographic and cultural trends that need to be arrested or else we will find ourselves in a tough situation uh, years down the road. According to Pentagon statistics, only one in four young Americans meets the mental and physical requirements to join. Lower your heels. One in four. So one in four young Americans meet the requirements. So that means out of every four people, one person will be able to join the army. And that one person has a choice on whether or not they even want to join the army. So it's no wonder the military is facing a recruitment shortage. And there's 300, 330 million Americans living in the United States. And we only need 2 million people in order to keep our armed forces at capacity. And we can't even do that. We can't even fill those numbers. Think about it. 330 million Americans and only 2 million people in the military. And we can't even keep that number stable. That is how terribly unpopular the military is. Young Americans meets the mental and physical requirements to join. Lower your heels down to the ground. Making it increasingly difficult for the military to find enough volunteers to fill the ranks. Ready, stretch. The army has started. What a joke. What a joke. Started a prep camp for those who want to join but can't meet the standards. But what in the world? They're so out of shape. So I guess he said this was a prep camp for people who who can't meet the standards. Lower your heels down to the ground. Making it increasingly difficult for the military to find enough volunteers to fill the ranks. Ready, stretch. 
The army has started a prep camp for those who want to join but can't meet the standard. How about stop feeding Americans this toxic food filled with chemicals and sugar that makes us fat? How about that? How about actually start regulating these food companies that put poison in our food? No other country has this much food, this much chemicals in their food. Oh, Monsanto, all these these insecticide company, companies just poisoning us, making us unhealthy, making us sick. That is the root cause of, of obesity. Um, We need to take out the root cause. Starting a prep camp for people who are, I'd say, naturally overweight or naturally have an unhealthy diet, that's not going to fix anything. They're still going to be fat because they're still eating the same nasty, disgusting food. Our water has toxic chemicals in it. That is making people dumber. If you want to increase the, 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 the standard for, for mental readiness, you're going to have to take the chemicals out of the water. You're going to have to clean the water, filter the water. People are drinking nasty water with freaking lead in it that makes them insane that's gonna dumb people down that is why america has so little options when it comes to recruiting new soldiers three we're a big country and our army is relatively small relatively small remember what i said earlier 330 million americans we only need 2 million soldiers to keep our numbers up in other in, in Israel they have only what seven million people, and and they have an army of two hundred fifty thousand. So a huge portion of their population is in the military. You're not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere doing this, because if they were actually serious about the military, they would eat healthier. They would exercise on their own. You shouldn't need a freaking boot camp a boot camp freaking junior to actually you no know, get get in shape you should be able to do that on your own just go to the gym maybe do a few push-ups every day just do something but if you're just eating 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 and you don't know when to stop you're gonna get fat you're going to be fat this is this is sad how the military is literally begging on its knees in order to get people to join. But Corey Shockey of the American Enterprise Institute says there needs to be a more basic change. The standards that we set for admission to the military have become increasingly onerous. These recruits are going through prep camp because they failed when measured against the Army's height to weight chart, a standard that hasn't changed in 30 years. The kinds of jobs that the military increasingly needs talent for may require different standards, and that doesn't mean lowering standards. It, it does mean lowering standards. Okay, that's literally what that means. Just means different. Defense Secretary Austin says today's all-volunteer force is the strongest military in human history. In human history. Think about it, in human, you know pride comes before the fall. We are too prideful as a nation, and our surrounding environment doesn't reflect our pride. So, homelessness out of control, wages all-time low, um, wealth inequality, the, the highest it's ever been. Oh, I'm so proud of our military. It's like we put all of our pride in our military. Nothing else matters, right? We're, we're the dumbest generation we've ever been. People are stupid, as stupid as they've ever been in this country. The, 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 the can't afford college, student loan debt, um, credit card debt. Um, people are foreclosing, <clears throat> foreclosing on their mortgages. Oh, this is the best military yet. Can we stop focusing on the military and actually fix this country? Fix the toxic poisonous food, fix 
our school system, our educational system, fix the debt crisis? Can we do anything that actually helps the root cause of why there was this massive recruitment crisis? To keep it that way, he will have to welcome about 190,000 recruits into the military each year. For CBS Saturday Morning, David Martin, the Pentagon. Yeah, this is self-explanatory. So this is an Iraq veteran confronts ex-president George W. Bush on the war desk. Mr. Bush, when are you going to apologize for the million Iraqis that are dead because you lied? You lied about weapons of mass destruction. You lied about connections to 9 11. You lied about Iraq being attacked. You sent me to Iraq. You sent me to Iraq. So it says over 260,000, over 76,000. 70, 276,000 people estimated to have been killed in the Iraq war. Bush sent troops into Iraq claiming it had weapons of mass destruction. No evidence of Iraq having weapons of mass destruction was ever found. Now they're wrestling the mic away to trying to get them out of there. They don't want the truth. They care about veterans until that veteran starts telling the truth. You, you killed people. You lied. Yes, George Bush is a war criminal by definition. He wanted to invade a country. He got millions of people to kill other people for a lie saying, Weapons of mass destruction. Even if Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, that still doesn't justify you invading their freaking country, bombing 250,000. Actually, I think this number is too low. I think it was more like a million Iraqis that were killed, Iraqi civilians that were killed. And, and that's a war crime. It's only okay when we do it. It's only okay. We're having weapons of mass destruction is only okay when we do it. Notice how we still have thousands of nukes, which can technically be classified as weapons of mass destruction. But if Iraq sort of, kind of, maybe has weapons of mass destruction, that somehow justifies invading their country, destroying their homeland, destabilizing an entire region. It's insane. You can't, you can't, no. No matter how much propaganda you have, you can't hide this stuff anymore. You can't hide the fact that we've wasted the last 20 years as a nation spending trillions of dollars on these useless wars, these destructive wars that have led to nothing. We've gotten more poor since these wars started. We've been more destabilized. We have all these military bases that do nothing, that are a huge drag on our economy. All that money we spent on wars could have forgiven all student loans, could have forgiven all debt, could have stimulated our economy. But instead of doing that, we'd rather just go on the other side of the world, bomb a bunch of buildings. And then they use that those bombing of buildings as an excuse to say, oh, we got to rebuild this country now. We got to spend the next 20, 20 years rebuilding this country and more money is being funneled into these conflicts. It's a joke. It's a joke. What, 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 where does this lead? And they're trying to do the same exact thing in Israel, in Gaza, in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Iran, in Syria. Go look back at the, the freaking general. I forgot his name, but the general said, we're going to take out seven countries in five years. Seven countries. Now, obviously, I I think it, it was a little bit short on how many countries they took out, but they were pretty dang close to taking out seven countries in five years. It, it It's not about defense. If you think our military at this current stage 
is about defense, you are utterly useless. We threw defense out the window after freaking World War II. Now we are an aggressive force that wants to hold its hegemony all across the world. Not about caring about its citizens, we're not about being a stable country. All that has been thrown out the win window. We're like the Roman Empire during its its final um centuries. They just focus on the military, focus on conquest. Meanwhile, the citizens, they're starving. They're they're angry. That's what we're like. So here's another TikTok from a US quote unquote soldier um in the military. I am in the army and running's what we do. We wake up in the early morning cause they tell us to. And oh my goodness. What a joke. Gundam style in, in freaking 2023. Oh my god, this is cringe. This is not what you should be doing if you're trying to make recruitment numbers go up. Like, the last thing I'd want to be doing is spending four years with people like this. The most annoying people you've ever seen in your life. For real soldiers with with actual, for, for real candidates that might be looking at this, they're going to say, why would I join this? What, what does this have to offer me? So I'm going to put my life on line having these two idiots watch my back. You're going to die if the enemy surrounds you and these two idiots are your only hope. And, and watching you while you while you sleep, supposed to watch your back while you're 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 sleeping, making sure the enemy doesn't get you. Would you trust them? The answer is obviously no. And if you do not wake up, it probably will get bad. You might get. Yeah, this is the nail in the coffin for the U.S. military. Forty-three millions of people have seen this video. I don't know how to check the views, but it has 42,000 likes. So a lot of people are seeing these videos. And, and and just twerking, really? Twerking? That's what a soldier does, twerk? She's definitely a morale booster. How, it's not a morale booster during combat. When you're with somebody like this during combat... Are you going to feel safe? Are you going to have a high morale? No. As an army vet, this is effing depressing. Obviously. Obviously. I guess the military no longer has standards. Exactly. These, really, these two are out of shape. They, they, they would not have met standards 30 years ago. Normalize ruthlessly bullying people in your unit who post F like this. So, yes, we the military clearly needs to have a culture of shaming people who make TikToks like this. But standards are so low that that might be against the rules. We found the barracks bunny. Yeah, so, and, and, and there's a, a, a saying that goes when, when you have a female in, you, in your barracks, she just gets absolutely railed by all the guys that is what happens so it's a joke and you you want to trust somebody like that to watch your back when when you're in combat when you're in a firefight and you're you're outnumbered um three to one would you trust this to freaking defend you obviously not i wouldn't and this guy says Thanks for your cervix. Get it? Service? Cervix? When strippers join the army. I guess the army did away with the, the height and weight standards. Yes, these people are not up to standard at all. They barely have any muscle mass. The military is like summer camp nowadays, and the young recruits act like they're in spring break. Exactly. Exactly looks like they are having a good laugh glad to see it the military could do with fewer veterans 
with psychological struggles. Most people who get psychological struggles actually see combat. And if these, pe these people are not in combat, they're not in combat. So they need to be training for the day that they are in combat. Because if they act like this, they get dropped off in freaking Syria, uh, Lebanon, uh, Iran. They're going to get killed. They're going to get killed if they get dropped off. If they act like this during training. Training. China going to have fun with that one. <laughs> exactly look at chinese soldiers look how they act they they don't they don't flinch they don't laugh they don't cry they don't do nothing like a soldier is supposed to act you're supposed to act like that as a soldier you're supposed to be mentally numb to everything you're not supposed to be laughing you're not supposed to be playing you're not supposed to be begging for likes on tiktok you're supposed to be numb supposed to be um um neutral so yeah our, our military is just a joke so here is a story saying the state department official resigns citing destructive decisions in israel hamas war so an actual state department official has resigned over the israel hamas war saying it's it's unethical it's morally wrong. So, yeah, this this goes without saying. At least somebody has a conscience when it comes to bombing innocent civilians. Um, yeah, but you just can't so you can't give Israel arms when you're literally bombing the crap out of civilians indiscriminately. And really, in a just society, this would be rightfully called a brutal massacre um, of innocents. Um, but instead, Israel says, oh, they're all terrorists. They're all not. They're all terrorists. They're all Hamas, which is insane. And, 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 and sociopathic. Matter of fact, it's psychopathic. It says a State Department official involved with transferring arms to key American allies resigned from his post on Wednesday, saying that short-sighted decisions by the Biden administration contributed to his having to make an unbearable moral compromise. So unbearable moral compromise. This is somebody responsible for transferring arms from the United States into Israel. He's saying, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to help fund this regime this this insane regime that has blood on saying i'm not going to do that i'm resigning in my 11 years i have made more moral compromises than i can recall each heavily but each but each with my promise to myself in, in mind and intact the official josh paul wrote in a post explaining his decision i am leaving today because i believe that in our current course with regards to the continued, indeed, expanded and expedited provision of lethal arms to Israel, I have reached the end of that bargain. I cannot work in support of a set of major policy decisions, including rushing more arms to one side of the conflict that I believe to be short-sighted, destructive, unjust, and contradictory to the very values that we publicly expose, he added. Paul worked for state's bureau of political military affairs according to his statement and his linkedin profile the office manages defense relationships with u.s allies and oversees the transfer of weapons and arms the huffington post reported the news earlier on wednesday his decision comes as the biden administration has been surging weapons and munitions to israel a longtime key ally in the Mil middle east following the Palestinian militant group Hamas surprise, surprise attack against the country earlier this month. But the war has also been accomp accompanied by emotional and sometimes vitriolic responses from, the, from a divided public regarding America's allyship with Israel, though the long-standing conflict in the region division expressed in, in events ranging from high-profile public protests to outbursts on college campuses so he knows this war is wrong it's not even really a war it's more like a genocide it's it's not a war this is not a war if you're talking about israel versus palestine it's a genocide 
It's a 75 year long genocide that will only end in the total elimination of the Palestinian people and ethnically cleansing. Um, yeah, this guy is right. This guy is right. There's no way you should should be shipping arms to the Israeli regime if you actually have a, a, a heart. If you actually know right from wrong, you would not be doing it. So, yeah, I completely understand this guy's feelings. So, that's just my thoughts on the military and its recruitment crisis and its moral crisis and its, its crisis of image. So, if you guys like the video, like, comment, subscribe.